So, Paul, Christmas is here. Uh, you play three games in, in quick succession over the next few days. Um, just to check on the sort of the health of everyone, first and foremost, did everyone get through Thursday okay? Yep, so I'm mixing my days up here. I'm thinking even Thursday. Yeah, yeah, everyone's got through okay. Nat's got a, a problem with his shin, uh, his ankle, so he won't be training today, so he might be a doubt for Boxing Day. But apart from that, I think everybody else is uh, pretty good. And everyone else, the longer term, is all sort of on track, the Connor Washingtons, etc. Uh, yeah, I saw Connor um, still on crutches the other day, so he's, you know, a long way away. So it could be eight weeks, it could be 7.9 weeks or 8.1. I don't honestly know, that's the truth. But I think he's, you know, ticking boxes as we go along. So hopefully we can get him uh, back as soon as possible. The win on, on Thursday night uh, took you third in the table ahead of everyone else playing on, on Saturday. It's all very tight in the, the top six at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why you know points are so crucial. That's why I'm still heartbroken that we um, threw two away uh, because we would be sitting second, which would be even nicer. But it is tight. I know there's a lot of games You know, uh, when this goes out. There's a lot of games today. Barnsley are playing Stevenage. I always like to see top six teams playing each other. Love a draw, by the way, love a draw. Uh, I'm off to watch uh, Northampton, Oxford. But uh, so there's loads of games, and uh, I said this loads of times. Obviously, these three games you can you know drop like a stone or rise like a phoenix, whatever the saying is. In these three games, you need to, as I've said all the time, I think I think you just need to average two points a game, and you'd be there or thereabouts. So if we could get six points over these three games, um, it would be very good because they are three very very tough games. Yeah, you're a, you're a couple of games short of the halfway mark of the season. I've asked yeah. your players this a few times over the last few weeks. So what's your sort of mid-term assessment, if you will? Uh, I think it's a bit like my school reports, really. Um, <clears throat> he's quite an intelligent kid, does quite well, could do better, I think. Well, apart from the fact that I used to be uh, a bit chirpy and probably had too much to say, that was on my school reports as well. But generally, um, yeah, I think that. I think we've been good in... I think we've been really amazing in parts of games. Um, I just don't think we've been as consistent in all the aspects of the game as I like. And maybe you don't get that. Maybe I'm just getting older and grumpier. Maybe it's a constant fight for every week for Utopia and keep layering on more detail. Not more detail, but the same you know, attention to detail. I feel that we're just constantly trying to improve. I don't think... I've ever left a game and I was fully content, but like I said, maybe that's because I'm 50, I just see the world in an angry place. But um, there has been some really good performances, there has been some uh, solid performances but, and magic moments within them, but um, I still don't feel like we're at 100%. Toot toot. Uh, and hopefully that will uh, come soon. Three games in, I think, seven days for you, starting on Boxing Day, starting with Wigan, um, who beat you opening day and impressed you, I think. Yeah, I liked them. Um, uh, and I think if you added their points to their tally, um, they'd be in the top ten, possibly, I think. I think they've got a, a similar um, sort of squad to us, respectfully, in the fact that like their players have been there, done that, you know, had success uh, and enjoy the big games. So playing us at home isn't a game that will fear them in any way. They'll relish it in the same way, you know, our players, our club enjoy playing in the big games as well. So I think it will be um, a really tough game. I know they, uh, the way they have been playing, I'm not saying they'll play that way against us, but we also have to, you know, concentrate on ourselves and what we're very good at and what we need to improve on. But they're a really good team who have peripherated between the, the two divisions in recent years. and. Um, if their best players come to the party, it'll be a very tough game. Final game of, of the year sees you go to Oxford, um, who've changed manager since you faced them early in the season, which I guess is a sign of the success they've had, the fact that Liam Manning moved on. Yeah, Liam done an amazing job there, kept him up last season uh, and recruited well this summer and, and started the, the season really well. I, I think if you rewind back to the early interviews, I think I had them as my uh, top tip um, because I, I know how he treats his players, how they're coached, how, um, how they play um, and how they've recruited players to play within the system. So I knew that they'd be a, um, a good side this year and they've continued the work that Liam and his staff have put down. Some of the staff are still there as well, so it's not like it's a complete change and the coach they've got in now has worked at Oxford before as well, so it's a nice fit. So um, you always get a 
a few little teething problems possibly initially, but um, yeah, we've, I've always enjoyed playing Oxford. It's a big pitch, which I think suits us. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but it'd be another uh, another big ask. Um, but look, that's what we're in it for. We're in it for those moments in games, those feelings in the dressing room after the game when you won, the, the competition, the, you've got to be right on point to win these games. And I prefer as a manager, um, with, the, with this group to go into them games. So hopefully we can take confidence from the Wigan game, go into the Oxford game, and then um, we have potentially the informed side at home um, with Peterborough, which will be a completely different game, in my opinion, than the Lincoln and the Wigan game at home. I think it will be a, a much more uh, open game. Do you think you'll learn something about your players over these next three games? Yeah, I'll learn the ones who, who don't bring the teacher an apple because it's Christmas, isn't it? I mean, I like to think that my, my de desk is a furore of fruit when I go back in. Uh, I think, um, I don't think I'll learn anything more than I already know. That's my honest answer. I think I have a really good um, feel of the group, of who does what, who I need to sort of keep an eye on over Christmas in a nice way. Some people, you know, will be on their own. Some people will want to, you know, go back to the capital or something. And so I need to keep an eye on a few. Um, but it is about quick turnaround of games and it is um, uh, not an exhausting season, uh, festive season, but being a footballer, you go home after training and then all of a sudden auntie might be around there, she's bought the Quality Street or other chocolates. If you go off Quality Street, you're a bit crazy to me, but celebrations are acceptable. But, and then, you know, everyone's having a glass of wine, it's Christmas and all that, and as a footballer, you have to sort of detach yourself from that and it, it's quite difficult at times. Um, and then you've got your young kids who are up at six on Christmas Day morning. So there is a there is a jolt. But I also know that the way we're trying to play, um, it's, it's a lot to ask of some of our players. So we're going to have to try and uh, jig the squad around to get the, the max points we can. Um, finally, maybe most importantly, what have you asked for for Christmas this year? See, you were nodding then. No, you weren't really. I'm joking. Uh, what have I asked for? Uh, after my kids, um, it, I mean, this is that makes me sound very dull. I love notebooks. Love them, right? So I've always, I've, I, if you go in my office, as you have, there'll be different notebooks everywhere. If someone buys me a notebook or a really good pen, I'm buzzing. So my son asked me the other day, so look, Dad, I've got to go shopping for you, like reluctantly, as any 20-year-old boy would be. Uh, what do you want? And I was, he went, oh, what about that pen? Shall I get you a new pen? And I went, I've still got that pen, mate. It's like, and I lose everything, but I haven't actually lost the pen he bought me. So I like things like that, or a great book. But it irritates my family. So if I open the presents, and I obviously I'm one of them who guesses what everything is, and they hate that, I like it. I think it's endearing. So I'll find the book, because someone will always buy me a book because they know it's a good go-to for Dad. So I'll get a book, I'll open it, and I'll think, right, I'll just have a little read. Get a coffee, sit in the corner, have a little read. And then my kids go ballistic going, Dad, there's other things to open. I'm like, what's the rush? What's wrong with your generation? Just enjoy what you have and move on. So hopefully a book, hopefully a pen, Hopefully a notepad, and then I'm happy. Everything after that is uh, not a necessary clutter. That sounds harsh, but I, ha I have everything I want in life, so um, that would be good. And obviously, uh, three wins would be uber amazing. I know that was the real football manager answer, but I, I, th I see the world differently to most, I think. So pen, book, notepad, equally three wins would be amazing. And generally for all Derby fans to have a great festive time with their loved ones. Well, I hope Santa is, is good to you. Merry Christmas, Paul. He better be. Thank you.